So we tried to perform some tracers experiments in column. Uh, initially, we wanted to have different materials. So these beads that you have, uh, where are they now? They are so they are passing around, but we also have another medium, which is just the same, almost the same, but crushed. So much less uh, permeable. And the idea was to look at how um, we would see the effect of diffusion in the columns. And uh, <coughs> uh, unfortunately, Tongi, we, we didn't see the folding. So the bachelor scale in the, in the beads, it will be maybe for the next Carja summer school after a PhD student has been working uh, very hard with these columns. And uh, no, I'm uh, seriously, it would be very nice. So we kind of, uh, to be honest, we unraveled a lot of uh, experimental issues in our experiment. And uh, this was the most interesting thing from my perspective, but maybe other pe people had uh, another perspective anyway. Uh, so our uh, initial objectives were a little bit like this. We would like to make a, a good characterization of the properties of the medium. We would like to find out the hydraulic conductivity. We will talk about this in a moment. Uh, the porosity of the, of the medium, stiffness of the balls, because we want to deform them. So we would like to have uh, some relationships between uh, these uh, deformation properties and the porosity, maybe. Uh, ob obviously, the size of these balls, and this is actually, uh, this has been a, a, some kind of a surprise because it's reacting with the fluid. And uh, other properties, so maybe we would like to have uh, now, we would like to know how much they would be shrinking any, with, when we put uh, salt in contact with them. Then we have uh, some tracer properties, so we wanted to see how, when we were doing some diffusion experiments, uh, how we could relate. Uh, the diffusion in this medium to diffusion in, in other medium. And, and for this, we had like to, to build up some experiments to determine these uh, diffusion coefficients. And finally, well, we had to do some tracer experiments. And this had, uh, man, I mean, this was a, a tough object objective. And we had, the, well, I think we performed well. We did a lot of tracer experiments. So we had so much data, actually, that uh, we got a little bit overwhelmed with all the data to treat. <laughs> anyway, so initial objectives. Um, somebody wants to talk about stiffness. Also, I need to say we did not uh, repeat this presentation. So if somebody wants to explain our protocol for measuring stiffness. Uh, sure. So <laughs> Wait, one moment. All right, so the idea was to try to see how much one of these sphere could be deformed <coughs> based on a certain for force. So it was, um, I think it took us like an entire morning, right? Yeah. To try to end up with this kind of setup. So the idea was just to look at, we were trying to put some pressure over the sphere that is standing here, and then we just wanted to measure how much uh, this sphere would have shrunk. To do that, we needed to know like which force we were uh, applying on that sphere. And um, yeah, what else? So what we did is basically, oh yeah, because we had like no scales, no, like we had to come up with a little bit of everything. So the idea was to try to make like a weight here and then the weight here is proportional based on the distance, is proportional to the force that is applied here. So we would basically go from uh, going with an entire be careful of water and then here, the, that would arrive just at the top of the sphere. And then we would get water out of it slower <coughs> and slowly and slowly. And then s the weight would go like slowly the other way around. And then we could measure at every step the height of the sphere. I don't know if that makes any sense. But OK, so that's what we tried to. So that was an idea to try to have this property of stiffness. Because what we wanted to do once they are in the columns was to, we wanted as well to compact them. So we wanted to know, because we realized as well that they, they would br um, break at some point. So that was a kind of an idea to know how much compaction we could put on the column for these little spheres. Oh, some diffusion is going yeah. Somebody wants to explain that? Uh, you, you, didn't you didn't do? Okay, so. Um, you correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> uh, basically what we had is a beaker 
and we would have a steering fish in it and having it on a magnetic steer. And in the speaker, we would have a defined concentration of either our tracer or a salt concentration. And we would have our beads inside and then we would start to, start to measure the concentration over time to see how it decays and it diffuses into the spheres. Um, and we did that um, in all, for all our tracer substances that we were gonna use later for the salt, we used electrical conductivity. And for the uranine and the rhodamine B, we would have a um, fluorometer, which would um, measure the concentration for us. Um, and what you can see on this graph, on the x-axis you have the time in seconds, and on the y-axis you have the concentration relative to the initial concentration. And for all the tracers, you can see that we have an, a decay in concentration from which we could theoretically calculate the diffusion coefficient. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can tell you a little bit more about this because I did this cal calculation uh, just now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, so here what we can see is the, this decrease of concentration uh, over time. It may, so as a qualitative assessment, we can already see that we have some differences uh, for salt, uranine, and rhodamine. And basically, we see that salt is just diffusing much faster, so which makes sense with literature review uh, values. This, this is known, and also we, all, we, all, we also have seen that the uranine and so forth rhodamine were, were diffusing faster. Um, at this stage, uh, we can see that our little value here of salt is increasing again at the end, and this we didn't see with the uranine but or uh, rhodamine but the thing is uh, at this stage we did not realize that the bows were reacting with the with the salt but as we said before when we put these bows uh, this gel in in contact with salt water they tend to shrink so here the diffusion coefficient is maybe uh, influenced by this shrinking uh, of the of the surface of the of the volume of the bowl so Anyway, what the value that we found are slightly, a little bit mo much uh, faster than the literature in this case. And we want to uh, start our uh, diffusion experiments and at the beginning we plan to inject both salt and other tracers together and we did it and after a short time later we failed because all of the uh, our gels shrink and almost one third of the column is with uh, gels and the remaining is water. So we decided to remove salt from our uh, experiments. So just do the experiments with uh, uranine and sulfuridumenin <laughs> and we injected it at the top and <coughs> You see the color change here, and uh, we made some diffusion experiments. But do we have any other color? Mm, yeah, we have the results of this no. experiment. But the pink that you. Mm. No? Mm. No, okay. <laughs> and then uh, we, we make our tests in different. In flow rates, yeah. and then uh, do we make so these results, I just can, I can one? This. Well, these results, they are the initial uh, tracer experiments that we did in the columns. So the first one shows a little peak, so we only see uranine and thank you. <laughs> we only see uranine and rhodamine, and we first injected a low concentration of tracer because we didn't know exactly how this would perform in the column. And we see that the arrival times is almost the same for both tracers. And <clears throat> however, we see that very quickly at the end, we, the, concentration, cons uh, the tracer concentration dies very quickly. And this is because also they, they goes below detection level. So we perform another experiment right after in which I think we lower the flow rate so that we see a little bit of diffusion these, are, these explain the tailing uh, at the end of the, of the <coughs> concentration at the, uh, at the late times. And we injected much more tracer. So what we see again is the same arrival time for the peak concentration. 
but uh, we find that the rhodamine is trapped uh, and then we have less concentration in, in the reveal time at late times. We have other data sets in which we see also these behaviors, but the data treatment has been a little bit chaotic anyways. We see that the diffusion is, we can reproduce diffusion in these experiments and it would be nice, I think, to make other experiments so to repeat and then to see if we, if we can have a, like a mean value for the, for the tracer arrival time and, and to see what, is about, what, what we get for repeatability of the experiments. But they so have the same refractive index than uh, the glass of the column, and so that's why you don't see them. Once they are full of water, yeah. it's really hard to see them. You can, so if you have water, you can put water in the baker, yeah. and you will see they're almost invisible. So technically, this is called index matching, if I'm right. And the idea behind this is when you have a lab we actually had the camera to look at uh, the evolution of the tracer in very specific places in the column. And the idea is to have just the tracer evolving. We look at the tracer plume, the evolution of the plume, and you, don't, you try not to be too influenced by the, by the shape of the spheres or the medium. And this way you can do data treatment afterwards to look at the deformation. Tangi and Joris were explaining some uh, things about this. And this is why we use these beads, which are, they have a really good index match with the, with the water. Mm, thank you for asking this question. Yeah, so here, the balls that you have seen, I'm answering, but if yeah. anybody wants to come in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, um, the ball that we have seen here are just examples of how, when you put these balls into the tracer, how the tracer would diffuse inside the ball. We actually left, since the beginning of the week, the, these little balls in the, some tracer, and then they were just uh, getting filled with, uh, with the tracer by diffusion. So it doesn't matter, we would like to have, uh, actually, it would be nice if we could see the tracer concentration inside the beads so that we know that there is diffusion when we do a very good experiment. This would be very nice to measure. Mm, but it doesn't, I mean, the idea is just to have a material which is the same, which has the same index mass as, as the water. Mm -hmm. Yves? So the, so the column experiment, uh, it depends, of course, of the flow rate and uh, the porosity that we impose. So in this case, we, we didn't explain so well the, maybe the experiments, but we are imposing the flow at the top of the column. And then, so this we control. If we know the porosity, then we have a mean value for the mean velocity inside the column. And in this case, I think we had some moments where we had like in so depending on the flow rate, but we had between two and half an hour the first arrival time. And the diffusion can be like around one hour or a little bit less than one hour. Uh, this is what I just computed before. Yeah. yeah so it's around one hour so and less. So it's, uh, I mean, it's completely relevant. It's feasible in the half, the experiment may take uh, just half a day or one day to have a full diffusion. And these were with the big beads. So imagine with the small material, I think it would be even faster. Well, I don't know. Mm.